God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the call. This is a very popular statement that a lot of uh, preachers make to illustrate different points. But I want to compare that statement to the scripture to see if it is so. The Bible says, and they would search the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. That's what we call critical thinking. That when a minister is ministering and preaching or teaching or communicating um, what they purport to be divine truth, we are supposed to have the wisdom to compare and contrast what they are saying to what God has said in the scripture. And so when we look at the statement that God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. It is the message is that you don't have to have the prerequisites for ministry before God calls you into ministry. And that's simply not true. The only issue is that we don't understand what the prerequisite to be used by God is. What we think is the qualification is not the qualification. So what we do is somebody would say something like, oh, I didn't go to seminary, but God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the call. As in they think going to seminary is qualification for ministry. Therefore, if I didn't go to seminary, then I'm unqualified, which means God called me though I was unqualified. But the question is, when has God said in scripture that the qualification for ministry is going to form, is being formally educated for X amount of years? Because Jesus was not formally educated. Remember this, the Pharisee said, how does this man know the letters having never learned? In other words, Jesus understood and knew the scriptures, though he never was formally educated in theology. So he, he wouldn't have went to what we would today call a, a theological seminary. No, but he knew the scriptures. So was Jesus unqualified for ministry? So what we do is we take what we think is a qualification, which is not actually qualification. And because they don't have that qualification, they think that they're unqualified, which means that God called me though I was unqualified. But they don't understand what qualifies somebody for ministry. First Timothy, First Timothy chapter 2, verses 20 to 21. He says, Now in a large house, in a large house, there are not only gold and silver implements, but also implements of wood, of wood and of earth, earthenware, and some are for honor, while others are for dishonor. Verse 21, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from these things, he will be an implement for honor, sanctified, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. He said, in a large house. What is the large house? The large house he's referring to is the church, is the household of God. He said in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, he says, but in any case... I am delayed so that you will know how to conduct himself in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and support of truth. So, so the household of God is the church. He's saying in the church, there are not only gold and silver implements. What are gold and silver implements? He says later in the verse, some to honor, some to dishonor. So the gold and silver implements are the vessels of honor. And the implements of wood and of earthenware are the vessels unto dishonor. What are the vessels of honor? The Greek word here for honor means valuable. So he's saying that within the church, there are believers who are valuable to God. And there are believers who aren't valuable. What do we mean by valuable? Useful. Not valuable in terms of he likes some and doesn't like others. He loves some and doesn't love others. No, we're not talking about loving and not loving. We're talking about something or someone being usable by God. Just like when you go into your kitchen, there are some utensils that are usable because they're clean and they're, uh, they're not broken. Then you have other utensils that may be dirty, they may be broken, whatever the case may be. They're all utensils. Some are valuable, that means usable, and some are not valuable. He's saying within the church, there are believers who are valuable, usable by God, and there are believers who are not usable. So that dispels the notion that God could use anybody. It's not true. There are some believers that are not usable, according to Scripture. Those are what we call the vessels of dishonor. They are not qualified to be used by God for a special work. No. Verse 21 clarifies what the qualification is. Verse 21, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from these things, he will be an implement for honor. That is, he will be valuable. He will be sanctified, which means to set, be set apart as holy or set apart for God's work. And he will be useful to the master, prepared for every good work. He's saying there's something a man must do to be prepared to be used by God. There's something a man must do to be useful to God. And if you don't do that thing, he said, if anyone cleanses himself, he will be useful to the master. Just like when you take a spoon 
in the kitchen. It only becomes useful when you've what, cleansed it. So that spoon had to be qualified to be used by you to eat by being cleansed. In the same way, were all utensils within God's house, not every utensil is usable. The utensils that are usable are the utensils that are what? Cleansed. Now, when it comes to being qualified for ministry for a special work, the non-negotiable qualification God has had and will always have is the heart. It's not even character. It's not even knowledge. It's not even competence or skill set. It's always been the heart. What do I mean by that? He said to, about David, when the sons of Jesse passed before Prophet Samuel, he thought because his sons were mighty in stature, handsome, looked like kings. These must be the ones that God has anointed. And then God told Samuel that God does not judge by the outward appearance, but he judges by the what? The heart. Now, what separated David's heart from other men? It's David's willingness to obey God, his willingness to serve God. That doesn't mean he didn't make mistakes. You clearly saw with Bathsheba. But when we say the heart, we're talking about the intentions and motives. His true desire is to obey God. But David had some deficiencies in the flesh. He's marrying multiple women, right? He took a man's wife, killed him, took his wife, impregnated her. He didn't even at least make her a special wife after it. He still just added her to the collection. So there are some deficiencies there in the flesh that you can see and point out. You could even say there's a bit of hypocrisy. He was so willing to judge somebody else uh, uh, when, 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 when he found out that somebody had took somebody's whatever. And then when he realized that it was actually him that Nathan was talking about, then he wanted God's mercy. So there are many things you can say these are deficiencies in the flesh of David, yet God still called him. When we're talking about the purity of the heart, it doesn't mean the person doesn't make mistakes or fall into sin. We're talking about the person has a heart that is willing to submit and obey God. As opposed to Saul, whose heart wasn't set to serve God, his heart was set to serve the people. So he was hearkening unto the voice of the people above hearkening to the voice of God. His true intention wasn't to submit himself to God, no. Saul was the people's king, but the king that God chose. That's what he meant when, when God's, that's what God meant when he said, David is a man after my heart. People think he means he's a man seeking God's heart. That's not what it means in the original uh, Hebrew or Greek. What it means is David is a man after my own choosing. This is the kind of man that I want. That's what he's saying. He said, I'll give you pastors according to my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. After my own heart, when God says after my own heart, it means after my own choosing. This is the kind of man that I want. And the kind of man that God wants is a man whose heart is willing to submit to him. This is a non-negotiable. Now, there are other prerequisites for ministry, but they're negotiable. One of them is character. One of them is competence. One of them is capacity. What is character? Your, your, uh, your life of virtue, the attributes that are evident in your life, self-control, patience, uh, diligence, so forth and so on. The attributes of God's nature. Then you have competence. That's your level of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The wisdom, the knowledge that you've acquired in your soul, the strength of the soul by reason of the revelation of God that you have in your mind. And then you have the competence, the skill set. The Bible says David led Israel with the integrity of heart and the skillfulness of hands. There's a place for a spiritual skill set when God wants to call somebody into ministry. He said a bishop must be skillful in teaching. So there's a skill set that the bishop must have. You see, but even those ones, character, competence, and capacity, they're actually negotiable. God can call somebody who doesn't have much knowledge. There are many instances of this in scripture, like Jeremiah, for example. He had no, he had no business with the prophetic. He, he, even uh, one of the prophets says, I'm not a prophet. I'm not the son of a prophet. I have no business with the prophetic. I was farming. Or he had some kind of uh, 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 mundane occupation that had nothing to do with any spiritual thing. And God just called him into the prophetic. So God can call somebody who doesn't even, who hasn't even read the entire New Testament. They don't have any biblical knowledge. But you see, do you know actually God can impart knowledge? He said, eat the scroll, you see. So that's not even actually a non-negotiable. Excuse me, that is a non-negotiable. No, no, no. That isn't a non-negotiable. It is a negotiable. He can do without it. He'd rather have it. But there are times when the calling on somebody's life is too urgent for God to wait to the, per the person to get a certain level of knowledge. Even character can be negotiable because character is different from the heart. Those are two different things. 
Character is the external manifestation of the attributes of God in your life. What does that mean? So, so for example, somebody can have a right heart but have low self-control. So they might be falling into sin because of the lack of self-control. It doesn't mean they're bad in that their intention is to violate God, but there's a weakness in their flesh. Just like somebody may have the heart and the intention to lift a weight, but their, their muscle can't support the action. So it's not that in their heart they want to anger God by sinning against him. They just have a virtue they haven't developed yet. God can call somebody like that. You can see character deficiencies in their life, but their heart is right with God. They're trying to serve him. You see, so that's actually un, un, unnegotiable. Even though God would prefer the person to have the right heart, character, competence, and the intellectual capacity, they're full of wisdom. You see that now? But God is dealing with men. Not all conditions in the man's life will be ideal. Maybe he didn't have the time to study the way others were studying. Maybe he didn't have time to develop character like every. Maybe he didn't have time to develop his spiritual skill set and learn how to hear God's voice and learn how to interpret scripture and learn how to teach and learn how to prophesy. He maybe he didn't have time to do all those things. So, but the urgency of the call upon his life necessitates God's calling him, even though there are certain things that are not yet in place and he'll have to learn on the job. You see that now. So, does a person have to be qualified to be called? Yes, he's telling you right here. Not everybody is usable because not everybody has a heart that's willing to serve God. It's not true. Not everybody has that. There are some people, their heart is in different things. Their heart is in their business. Their heart is in relationships. Their heart is in marriage. There are some people, the ultimate, the, the ultimate objective, the ultimate pursuit in their life is to get married. That's where their heart is. They're, just look at their prayer point. You know where their heart is. Not praying about ministry. They're not praying for souls. They're not praying for the nations. Not pr their heart is not set to serve God. Their heart is just to get things from God. That's the kind of person that God doesn't use. Believers that their entire prayer list is about things for me, God, my job, my business, my spouse, my this. That's the kind of person that's not usable. Their heart is not right. Their not, heart is not wholly devoted to serving God. No. So that person would be unqualified. Even if they went to seminary for 2,000 years. Even if they don't sin. Even if they know all the scriptures, they're not qualified to be serving God. No, their heart is not right. They don't have the heart of David. Shalom.